exotic creatures are not always found in wild and remote locations. At times, they turn up in the most unlikely places. Five miles southwest of Dallas, Texas, the more common southwestern sites give way to a surprising scene. The Fossil Rim Wildlife Center covers nearly 3,000 acres of prime Texas countryside. More than 1,000 animals live here, among them some of the rarest in the world. This privately owned reserve has quickly become a remarkably successful breeder of severely threatened species. The philosophy behind Fossil Rim involves the creation of surroundings similar to those in the wild. With all this room to roam, the animals behave very much as they would in their natural habitat. Among the growing trend of private reserves in the United States, Fossil Rim is considered a model. Good morning, Fossil Rim. It's the only reserve in Texas accredited by the American Association of Zoological Parks and Aquariums. A staff of about 70 keeps fossil rim going at an efficient clip, mixing cutting-edge techniques with traditional Texas methods. The people here work long, hard hours, offering around-the-clock emergency care if needed. Can you come to the draft house and take a look? Okay, on my way. Fossil Rim is helping to maintain some of the world's most fragile wildlife populations. There are 32 different kinds of animals sheltered here, among them 15 highly endangered species. The scimitar horned oryx was once revered by the ancient Egyptians. Only a century ago, many thousands of them populated North Africa. Today, they are extinct in the wild. Fossil Rim's herd of 54 is one of the biggest in captivity. The Grevy zebra is the largest, most solitary, and rarest zebra in the world. As part of an international effort to prevent the Grevy's extinction, Fossil Rim can count 15 new colts born since 1986. A subspecies of the world's second largest land mammal, the southern white rhino, was considered extinct until a herd was discovered about a hundred years ago. Protected since the turn of the century, the population numbers about 4,000, and poaching still threatens it. Fossil Rim may have two pregnant females, a major coup. Come here, buddy. The rhino must wallow or drink every few hours. The Fossil Rim group has an outdoor mud hole, but sometimes get personalized treatment inside their heated shed. A good scrub removes dead skin and insects. Afterwards, an invigorating shower keeps the skin moisturized and cools the animals, which do not perspire. Fossil Rim is located in the heart of rural North Central Texas. The area holds on to many traditional values, though things have changed since the oil boom of the 70s went bust. The bigger than life lifestyle of many Texans had to shrink as the economy was given a rough ride. They say go ahead, watch the spurs over the horse's shoulder and he will jump out of the chute. One of those who took a fall was the oil baron who created the forerunner of Fossil Rim. It began as a retreat for his private enjoyment. Then 
In 1987, the ranch was rescued from foreclosure by Jim Jackson and his wife and business partner, Christine Jerzykowski. In the few years since, they have radically revamped the place. Jim and I were both interested in the environment and animals, and one day I saw a film on another gentleman in England who has a wildlife preserve, and we were really touched about how individuals can make a difference. And to make a very, very long story short, we decided to get involved hands-on instead of supporting other organizations. One of the things that probably makes a big difference here is the way in which the animals are kept. They're kept in relatively large pastures with surroundings that are somewhat similar to how they would have been in the wild or as best we can accommodate them in this particular area. Donations and thousands of visits by the paying public are helping to keep the rapidly expanding project going. State officials turn to Fossil Rim to take in confiscated animals, and zoos coordinate the latest in breeding programs with them. Even as Fossil Rim becomes involved in an ever-growing number of areas, its ideals remain clear. We tend to try to manage them as if they were wild animals, which they are, and, and not make them into people. I think that's one mistake we can all make, and I call it the Bambi complex, but we tend to think all wild animals are sweet little deer, and uh, they're not. They all have a, a purpose in the system, and, and they are wild animals. And I think the more we can treat them like that, the better for their long-term care and survival they might be. These two little baby black buck. There are now more black buck in Texas than in their native habitat in India. They were once the most abundant antelope on that subcontinent. A top speed of close to 50 miles per hour allowed them to outrun most predators, except man. Females, which move in harems, are competed for by the larger, darker males. Each male has a territory in which he offers a bold display to attract potential mates. If a female moves even a few feet outside his border, however, he will not cross over. Still, the occasional boundary dispute does erupt. Since Fossil Rim has adequate room for the males to retreat, however, serious wounds are rare. We will return with wildlife tales on the Discovery Channel. This portion of Discovery is sponsored in part by Toyota, reminding you to buckle up. When you buy a 1993 Toyota 4Runner with an extra value option package, you might say you get even more than you bargained for. The power door locks and air conditioning alone make it a really cool deal. Come here, quick. Plus, you get carpeted floor mats. Let's go around. Power side mirrors, power windows, and of course, cruise control. All this and more, and you save $1,000 too. So why not drop in yourself and check it out? Every business morning, while the rest of the world is getting up, UPS is guaranteeing overnight delivery before 10.30, for far less than other companies charge. And every business morning, more people are waking up to that fact. Good morning. Good morning. Would I risk washing this shirt in anything but wool light? No way. I love this shirt. I just feel good when I wear it. Two years ago, I wore it the day I sold my first house. This year, I wore it the day I sold my biggest. I hope it always looks this great. Compare this brand new shirt with one that's been washed 30 times in wool light. They look the same because wool light won't damage fibers. Does this look like I wash it in anything but wool light? Trust wool light to help keep all your favorite clothes looking like new year after year. Tonight, it's heroes and legends from American history. First, hold back time with William Wyler's classic documentary of patriotism and valor. Take off with the invincible Memphis Belle. Then, honor the man who discovered America. At 10, old world experts ask where Columbus's remains lie. And at 10.30, meet modern revelers keeping his memory alive. Tonight, beginning at 9 Eastern,
Wednesday, whether lounging poolside or modeling the latest fashion, their pampered pooch is running with a fast crowd. Discover a doggy dreamland when Mac and Muttley visit the Canine Spa. Then at 8.30, cute and cuddly, wet and pudgy, babies of all shapes and sizes, finding happy homes with foster moms. Visit orphan nurseries for all kinds when Loretta Swit hosts those incredible animals. Wednesday, beginning at 8 Eastern, only on the Discovery Channel. We now return to Wildlife Tales on the Discovery Channel. Bruce Williams is in charge of daily operations at Fossil Rim. His ambition to be a cattle rancher has taken a twist. He now cares for very different kinds of animals. Look. That a boy. Come here. That a boy. There you go. Gumby, the little giraffe calf that we're bottle raising, he uh, he's had quite a quite a story. He was born on Christmas Day, and. Uh, hit the ground with a splat from about a six-foot fall, and uh, things didn't go too well for him. He basically had a systemic infection when he was born. As in nature, sometimes mothers know that their offspring are not well and are probably likely not to survive, and she rejected him. So then we were faced yeah. with a rejected calf that was really facing some serious health problems. Uh, we almost lost him the first day or two, and, and somehow he, he pulled through. He, his, his name is Gumby, but his nickname is Trooper because he's such a fighter. And uh, he uh, is still being bottle raised. He's beginning to eat on his own now some. It, it's true that we have a, a lot of different species of endangered animals here, but we have several that are not. Uh, all of them potentially at, at some time or another could have health problems and uh, it, when they do it doesn't matter whether or not they're endangered they, it's an animal with a health problem and, and we treat them all the same that's our responsibility to the animals uh, if we can't do that we don't have any business having them good medical care for wildlife calls for ingenuity Head veterinarian Dr. Evan Bloomer is constantly faced with a plethora of medical conditions. One of the less serious and more improbable being pigeon-toed ostrich chicks. He's devised what could be described as corrective shoes. Without them, the ostrich will develop deformed legs. Right, Only a few days' wear is sufficient to overcome the problem in the fast-growing chicks. Okay, let's see what he does. Much of the veterinary care needed at Fossil Rim can't be learned from a textbook. The challenges here are often unique. Still, they present a major opportunity for the advancement of wildlife medicine, a field still in its infancy. One of the really valuable things about a place like Fossil Rim is that it is serving as kind of a testing ground for the development of some new approaches to managing uh, animals in captivity. As some of the world's wild places begin to disappear, we're going to begin to look at a lot of the natural preserves that are left as kind of mega zoos. We're going to have to figure out how do we provide medical care for these animals that are in something the size of a national park. The techniques that we're developing here hopefully will provide some of the early experience for, for that kind of work. The cheetah is in grave danger due to its extremely small gene pool and is notorious for its poor captive breeding record. At Fossil Rim, the cats are given a large area, allowed to choose their own mates. And though they do not hunt, they are kept close enough to prey animals to see them and to catch their scent. Perhaps because of these kinds of stimuli, the reserve has a phenomenal record of 47 cheetah cubs born in only five years, and more on the way. 
A recent project in conjunction with the National Zoo of the Smithsonian Institution has successfully achieved the first cheetah in vitro fertilization. The paradox of a natural setting and constant intervention creates a lovely but perhaps slightly unreal utopia. This idyllic retreat is in some ways a refugee camp, albeit an excellent one for displaced animals. Walk across Texas with you. GMAC financing only at your GM dealer. Uh, is there someone live I could talk with around here? Do we have one of our calendars? This is a fine calendar. We also have what they call a pretty calendar. If I can only find it. Millions of Americans with disabilities are eager and able to contribute to society. That's why Jim Brady is calling on America. What? Give people with disabilities a chance, and we'll show you what we can do. Something is going on that suggests that human beings have abilities to communicate in ways that we do not yet understand. Psychic Powers, Monday at 9 Eastern, only on Discovery Showcase. To Diane Feinstein wants to slash defense spending nearly three times more than the experts. Cuts that two independent studies say would cost California over 300,000 jobs. It could be your job. John Seymour knows it's time to fight. Those cuts left us with some questions. John Seymour has real answers. Seymour's a fighter for us. I'm not so sure about Feinstein. It's not just talk. John Seymour can really do something about jobs for California. If anyone can keep us working, it's John Seymour. John Seymour, fighting for California. Presenting Digital Music Express. 30 channels of CD quality music for your stereo. No interruptions. No talk. Ever. And for you classical lovers, DMX offers separate channels for symphonic, chamber music, and opera. If you like music, you're going to love DMX, Digital Music Express. Just call us today. Call now for a special offer and free demonstration. We now return to Wildlife Tales on the Discovery Channel. Morning brings a tentative appearance by the maned wolf, a South American animal related to the wild dog. Their long legs are meant for hunting in tall grasses, but the pompous are disappearing. Only a few thousand maned wolves are left in the wild. They are delicate and difficult to keep in captivity. Fossil Rim is part of a coordinated major effort to save the species. This kind of hand raising is only done as a last resort, necessary due to the poor survival rate of pups born in the past. Another of Fossil Rim's programs involves breeding animals that once flourished in Texas. The coati has generally been pushed out of the southwest, back into a few regions in Central America, where they're often considered pests. Still, Fossil Rim hopes that Texas may once again find room for them. 
though any reintroduction effort must be closely coordinated with the U.S. government. The secretive Margay also once lived in the wilds of Texas and is another candidate for eventual return to the brush. Though with some 95% of their habitat turned to agricultural use, their future is very much in question. And what about the animals that don't belong in North America? Escapees from other wildlife reserves have survived and become known as taxotics. But there's a risk of these animals upsetting the local natural balance. As places like Fossil Rim breed more and more animals, the question of what to do with them arises. Reintroduction is only viable on a very limited basis. Will there ever be room again anywhere for huge numbers of animals like the sable antelope? The herd here is about to increase yet again. A heavily pregnant cow is being followed by the others as she prepares to give birth. Cows stay near as she finds a secluded spot. A new and healthy calf has been born. It will quickly be accepted into the herd. It will live out its days here in Texas. It will have a life free from the danger of predators and will be cared for by humans if it falls ill or is wounded. Perhaps this is the future of much of the world's threatened wildlife. Not really wild at all, but living in limbo, thousands of miles from where it evolved. Humanity has become keeper and caretaker of the world it has created in its own image. Those who are trying to intercede and correct what has been damaged face a long and hard struggle. The things that are most challenging about working in a place like Fossil Rim are kind of twofold. First of all, there's the, the built-in problems of having to provide medical care to a large diversity of threatened species. There isn't much that we know about a lot of them, so many times you don't have sources of information to go to, so you end up kind of being fly by the seat of your pants kind of medicine. But that's good and it's exciting, but it also means that you're often uh, unsure about exactly what to do. When you combine that with the fact that most of these animals are free-ranging, they may be in five and six hundred acre areas, we can't even get close enough to find out what's wrong with an animal in many cases. We have to do diagnoses through binoculars. We have to rely on our eyes and our ears and our noses to, to figure out if something is wrong. And we have to immobilize these animals and bring them into the clinic for any kind of workup at all. By 1990, as few as 12 adex antelope survived in the wild. These African herbivores have been used by armies for target practice. Fossil Rim has 91, the biggest group in the world. Today, a wounded Attex has been sighted by the staff. Protective gear is essential when preparing the powerful tranquilizer needed for these dangerous and aggressive animals. I'm in the process. Okay, how far down is she? She's right in the smack the bottom of the creek. Can she see? Could she see you where you were? No, she never saw me. So we could sneak over, sneak over there and, yeah. and do it. All right. And if nothing else, we'll get her up there in this open area up here. The Adex has moved off with the herd, and a coordinated search has begun. It could take hours to find her. When she said that, we never saw him.
even tranquilized, addicts are to be approached with caution. The problem is a badly injured hoof, but treatable. These procedures are costly, but the general rule is that no expense is spared. Fossil rim is going strong and making an admirable and significant contribution to conservation. What do its founders want for the future? I think both Christine and I really hope that efforts such as Fossil Rim and others will someday lead to the extinction of those facilities themselves. If we are successful in the next hundred years or so, it's very likely that we can restore some of the natural balance in a much more natural environment and therefore do away with the need for facilities such as Fossil Rim. At present, the world's wild creatures continue to be backed into ever smaller corners of our Earth. The lucky ones end up at a place like Fossil Rim. It's not home, but for the time being, it is a place that is perhaps even better. Coming up, celebrate Columbus Day with San Francisco's Italian community. Stay with us for Hello, Columbus. But now, fold back time with William Wyler's classic, Memphis Belle, next on Discovery Sunday. Whether lounging poolside or modeling the latest fashion, their pampered pooch is running with a fast crowd. Discover a doggy dreamland when Mac and Muttley visit the canine spa. Then at 8.30, cute and cuddly, wet and pudgy, babies of all shapes and sizes, finding happy homes with foster moms. Ram is a green alert, part of the Discovery Channel's ongoing commitment to the environment. Mm -hmm. 